So welcome back to another post bag. It's a bit dirty here. Um, not a lot of it's inside envelopes or whatever because some of it came from Amazon. So it came in a massive box and I've already taken that apart. So first up, um, we'll go with the only thing that's in an envelope. Actually, one thing is kind of sort of packed up, but it's this. Now, do I have to go from this end? I do. Oh, okay. Not inside any anti-static stuff. Let's come in a bit closer. Uh, focus, how do we do that? There we go. So these are LM3915s. Now, I don't know if you remember, you must remember really, because uh, the last video was this, the LM3914 thing that I was playing around with, which does work. I've got a CR2032 here. What's that positive? And negative, so, oh, that battery is a bit too low. Negative, positive. Hello, uh, it's sort of working. Anyway, this I put a video up about and somebody pointed out that there was an LM3915, which has a logarithmic response. I believe that's correct, which is apparently more appropriate for audio applications. So I thought I'd go online and find some. Interestingly, in the LM3914 datasheet, it doesn't mention any other versions of the thing. Um, so there's also an LM3916 as well. So I'll be trying that one out and seeing what kind of a difference it makes. Next up, we have this little thing here. This is a temperature and humidity sensor. Sense, uh, can't speak. But the interesting thing about this, I think this is a Xiaomi ripoff, um, a, zip -off, a rip off of a Xiaomi product. Um, thermal, thermo hygrometer. Uh, I don't know if it's got some stats on here we can read. It's powered by a CR2032 and that's one of the reasons I'm interested in it is because it's very low power. And you might wonder why it's super low power. And that's because, in fact, let me just grab the one that I currently use. So I currently use this one. This one was super cheap, not expensive. In fact, it was cheaper than this one. This one was £13.98 from Amazon. Um, oh yeah, these were about 250. Uh, this was about five quid, I think. Um, and it runs on a single AAA cell. Now I'm using a non-rechargeable just because I had one available and it's been running for about a year, I think. Anyway, that's pretty good. Um, it doesn't keep the time because I've never set it. So it says 5.37 a.m. It isn't that time. It's like eight in the evening. Um, but it works pretty well. That is the temperature in here. <laughs> it is hot. Uh, I've got my computer on and I had previously been running a 3D print. We'll talk about more, that, more about that in a second. Anyway, let's have a look at this thing, shall we? So what do we get in here? some kind of jazz and the thing. Oh, it's an e-ink display. Did I mention that? I may not have said that. That's why I'm interested in it. So it is small. Oh my God, that's cool. Check that out. It's tiny. How the hell does it stand up? Do you just lean it up against something? What are these things? Oh, it's got a little stand. Oh. That's cool. I'm liking this a lot. I mean, it, it's gonna perform no differently, I imagine, to this, but it's this, so it looks a lot cooler. And what are these? Sticky or magnetic? Have I got something magnetic here? Ah, they're magnetic. So stick on the back, put it on your fridge maybe. And that is, Oh, that's just some double-sided tape, it looks like, so you could stick it to something. It does not come with a battery separately, but it might come with one installed. If I pull out this little tab. Uh, here we go. So is it going to update? Oh, there we are. Uh, what's the little face all about? 
Let's see if we can... Oh, sorry about that. Seemed to have a little bit of a camera malfunction there. The battery died, so I've just plugged it into the mains. Now, it is an e-ink display. If you, if you have a 4K monitor, you probably can see it. You'll see some slight discoloration there. It is pretty cool. So it's 26 point, I'm not, oh, these, so they change when the number changes, that's interesting. So, um, oh, I wonder where the sensor is for that. Let's see if we can change the temperature. I've got some air duster stuff here. Let's see if we can find a hole on it or something. Ah, just there on the side. So I'll spray it in from the other direction. We'll see if we can alter the temperature. That should be enough. I don't know what its update rate is, but it didn't seem to change the temperature too much. So it is basically agreeing with this one, almost. It's a little bit out. Well, we'll come back to it and see if it changes. If I see it dive down, then I'll let you know. But what I find interesting about this is it, it claims to have a year battery on a single CR2032. So I'm gonna test that. I'm not gonna wait a year because I read the reviews and it said it dies a lot sooner than that. So if it does, we're gonna look at the current consumption of it and, um, and see what else we can wire in. It doesn't look like it's too difficult to take apart. There's probably I can't do that. Let's try again. It looks like it's just a bunch of clips on the back, but we'll save that for another day. Next up, we have this, which will fit in shot if I zoom out a little. Now this is some 3D printing filament from Technology Outlet. Um, it was fairly cheap. It's £14.95. It is 1.75 millimeter PLA nature. <clears throat> I think that just means it's natural coloured PLA as you may be able to see there without oh actually let's uh, just push everything out of the way there and we'll focus on that so yeah we've got PLA colour nature diameter 1.75 one kilogram and it looks to be just natural PLA and I've been printing in natural PLA something really fun and I'll just uh, sort of dip in a section here so you can see it. Now this is a Jurassic Park gate. I decided I wanted to 3D print something that came from a film and because I haven't done the HAL project yet, doing the HAL 9000, then I thought I'd start with this. Um, and I've made a prototype, but I haven't done a video on it yet because I've not finished the design. I haven't got the uh, lights in, the little flaming torches. So uh, that will be coming. So yeah, this filament is for that. It was fairly cheap, got it off Amazon, so it was delivered to one of those lockers. So I don't have to be in, which is great. Next up, um, I've been shopping at LCSC. And so, apart from some 555s, which I'm not gonna show you now because I've taken them out to do some, um, oh no, they are here but I've already had them out. So I bought some TLC 555s. Remember those badges? Well, I used the TS 555 and I bought some from AliExpress and they don't run down to three volts. So they are not TS 555s. Even if they say so on the, like, the marking on the chip, if they don't run down to three volts, then that's not what they are. So um, I've had to buy some more, which is a shame, but I bought a hundred, so that will cover the the badges, I think. But what else did I buy? Well, I picked up some more LEDs because I wanted to try some of the green yellow ones. Don't know what green yellow LEDs look like. Maybe it's just a light green. Um, I don't know, but I picked up 300 of those. Is that right? Doesn't seem to say on there. Oh no, quantity five, 500. Why did I do that? Okay, maybe some people get some green <laughs> yellow LEDs with their badge. And then the ones I'm really excited about 
are these. I thought I bought these in the other way around. Uh, these are pink LEDs. So uh, <laughs> I bought 300 of these. Ah, oh, that is a shame. I think these are 0603. Oh yeah, there we go. 0603, 300 pink LEDs. Um, Cause I wanted to like do a pink LED matrix, which will be fun. Anyway, let's move these out of the way. Um, incidentally, so the, uh, those pink LEDs for 300 were $8. And then these ones for 500 uh, green yellow LEDs were $6. And then the, um, God, I think the TLC 555s were something like $27 or something. Um, I've just got something stuck to my arm <laughs> and it's, it's one of the gates from the Jurassic Park thing, which you'll get to see eventually. So what's next? We have, da, 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 da. So I watched a, a video that, um, Big Clive did, and he had bought this engineer solder sucker. I haven't got mine to hand, but um, that super intrigued me because it sounded like a cool brand. So I picked these up, the engineer NS04, which are micro nippers. And essentially they're side cutters. Um, you can see them in sort of profile there so you can snip along the side. Now I already have a pair of side cutters which I really like and these are these YTH109. They're great, they're really good but I've had them for a number of years now and if I close the jaws, do I focus on that? I don't know, uh, there we go. So if I close the jaws there's a bit of give there, even though the jaws are closed because this nut is sort of coming loose, nut or press fitting, I don't know. Um, so it sometimes means it cuts weirdly. So I thought I'd pick these up. Um, I'll probably be saving them for best, if you know what I mean. So these were about 16, 15 pounds, 16 pounds. I'll put a link in the description anyway, because they're fairly cool. And there's loads of engineer tools there. So you can have a look at the rest of their range. I'm going to try and focus here. There we go. Um, oh, crumbs. Should we get it out? You know what? We're going to get it out. So I don't understand any of this. Uh, hardness. HRC 58, whatever that is, but here they are. Oh, look at that. So they've got a stopper you can manually adjust here. They feel nice. There's a nice bounce back to them. Oh, it does sound good. Listen to that. That's just me doing that. Uh, these ones on the other hand. Not quite so appealing, but these on, were also three pounds and these were 15 or 16 pounds. So there's a big difference there. Um, so I'll let you know how I get on with them. You will see them in future videos because I want to show them off, honestly. And then the very last thing that I've got is um, it's not very exciting, but I wanted to ask you guys about it. Um, it's some magnets. Now the crack badges fit on your clothes with magnets and um, which way around is this? Oh, it's here. And I thought I'd buy some magnets and then I could maybe sell, send them out to people. However, I have no idea if you can send a magnet in the post. It looks like you can, because Amazon sent these to me, but there's an awful lot of protection here to stop it sticking to things. Do I need to worry about that? I don't know. Have I got a crap badge around? I do. So these are, what kind of pull are these? Does it say? Hang on. These are five by five by two millimeter neodymium magnets. I'm never sure if I'm saying that right. Um, and they weren't super expensive. They were like four pounds, three pounds and 12, three pounds and 12 pence. 
for a pack of 25 and they claim to have a 0.52 kilogram pull. So 500 gram pull on them it can hold, which seems like a lot, but I don't know about magnets really. Anyway, let's uh, put a battery in this crap badge. Uh oh, where did it go? Did it just go back onto there? I hope so. <laughs> so crap badge spinning around. Magnet, which feels like maybe I've got one less than I should have now because I don't know where it's gone. Uh, through something. Through this. Oh, it needs to be fabric, really. <laughs> I'm super well prepared for this. Through this bubble wrap. There we go. We'll do that. So there you go. You can wear your crap badge on some bubble wrap. Uh, potentially other things like a shirt or a duffel coat. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. I've just picked up all the other magnets now. Okay, I think that's about it for today's post bag. Um, thank you very much for watching. If you've got any comments on how to do magnets in the post, I would appreciate it because otherwise I won't send any out to anyone because they're not expensive to buy. I mean, if you decided to spend three quid, you can have 25 for all your crap badge needs. Anyway, all of this junk has been today's post bag. So thanks a lot and I'll speak to you all soon.